One of the most well-organized places you've ever seen is an aircraft carrier. An aircraft carrier's almost 5,500 crew members serve one purpose, to reliably launch aircraft into the air and securely land them at the conclusion of their mission. It comes at the perfect time since major mishaps could happen if one person is not paying attention. In order for takeoff and landing to be successful, each operation must be carried out in the proper order and with good coordination. Because an airplane's sound is so loud, hand gestures are the only means of communicating. What are the various hand gestures used by the crew of an aircraft carrier to communicate? Welcome back to another episode of High Technology. Before we feature on hand signals on an aircraft carrier's flight deck, feel free to join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. Without further ado, here's how aircrafts land safely through hand signals on flight decks. You should not use your own or self made signals because they could be misinterpreted and result in a harmful situation. Let's talk a little bit about the flight deck crew's assignments first. Based on colors, the officers and technicians uniform on the flight deck have special meaning. They indicate their respective job responsibilities by wearing different color jerseys. Yellow jerseys will be our first focus. These men are aircraft handling officers, catapult officers are also known as shooters, arresting gear technicians, plane directors who supervise taxis and aircraft movement on deck and plane technician. Catapult and arresting gear crew, air wing maintenance, quality control, and ground handling employees are identified by their green uniforms. White jerseys with a red cross insignia on their back are worn by the quality assurance squadron, aircraft inspectors, landing signal officers, air transfer officers, safety observers, and medical personnel. Arming the aircraft is the responsibility of the red jersey wearing ordnance handlers. In the event of a major crash, they also serve as a fire department or wreckage team. Plane handlers, chalk and chains, entry-level flight deck employees, aircraft elevator operators, and tractor drivers are all on board blue jersey. They have a right to low-risk occupations because they are essentially rookies and they typically operate under under officer supervision. Aviation fuel handlers wearing purple jerseys are in charge of managing and delivering fuel. Additionally, they aid the red jerseys in their salvaging efforts. Captains with brown jerseys are the people in the quadrant who gets the planes ready for flight and are in charge of overseeing maintenance and the general health of their planes. Each aircraft has its own allocated plane captain. They claim that they actually own the plane and that the pilot is merely borrowing it for a few hours. Because of this, the name, rank, and hometown of a plane captain are frequently written on the front landing gear bay door of an aircraft. In reality, several NATO allies have started using this kind of flight deck crew marking in addition to the US Navy. As a result, an FA-18 Hornet pilot, for example, can land on a French Charlton Gold carrier without being puzzled. Okay, let's Let's start with the initial aircraft setup and engine setup. The PC first instructs the pilot to turn on the APU. He points to the exhaust of the APU while rotating his right hand counterclockwise. An alternative air source for the environmental control system or to power the air turbine starting for a typical energy start is produced by the APU or auxiliary power unit, which is a small guff turbine engine. Next is turning the engines on. The PC spins his other hand clockwise while indicating with his left hand which engine. In this example, example, engine number 2 should be started. He also does the same thing on the aircraft's full side. However, this time, the computer displays one finger, signifying engine number 1. When hands are crossed, the flops are entirely lowered because the auto position has been switched to. This time, PC maintains its palms extended from wrist to wrist before abruptly closing them to raise the wing flaps, though it is now hardly visible. This indication indicates that the test of the control surface is about to start. This time, the airplane stick is symbolized by the hand of the pilot. The pilot complies with his instructions and adjusts the stick. The palms of the left and right ailerons expanded to drop the wing flaps while they monitored the elevator movements. In order to inspect the left and right rudders which are controlled by the pilot's leg, the PC now raises his hands. Hands off is indicated by raising them in the shape of a letter Y. The last checks under the jet are about to be made by the maintenance controls. By lifting his hands to indicate that he is not touching anything inside the cockpit, the pilot verifies this. The plane's captain waits for the yellow shirt to arrive after performing final checks. And when he does, he hands the controls of the airplane to him. And going forward, he will be in charge of aircraft navigation. He begins removing all of the tie downs by making a wiping motion down the arm. The director demonstrates to the pilot the removal of all tie downs and the wheel chokes, which are represented by closed fists with thumbs pointing outward. The director's hand signals and the taxi technique on the flight deck are very similar to the ones used by the marshals on land. Go forward, make a left, 
a right and then stop. It is crucial that the director doesn't move when signaling the pilot because doing so could create the misleading impression that the pilot is moving. Fly 1, Fly 2, and Fly 3 are the names of the three sections that go from the front to the back of the flight deck. Each sector has a designated director who is in command of the planes passing through the area at any given time, and he transfers control to another director when the aircraft departs from his section. The plane is guided to a designated catapult. The flight deck is shielded from aircraft jet blast by a jet blast deflector behind JBD, which is a very sturdy tunnel. The plane resumes taxiing after the catapult is ready. To lengthen the launch bar and spread the wings, the plane director is now giving three signals quickly one after another. Let's talk a little bit more about the catapult now. Setting the catapult's steam pressure properly is crucial. If there is too much pressure, the front landing gear will be severed. When the aircraft is unable to move quickly enough to gain a positive rate of ascent, too low pressure will cause so-called halted shots, which could lead to an outcome like this. A center deck operator hiding behind a little hatch is in charge of this proper cutoff configuration. The aircraft's actual weight as well as the velocity and direction of the wind affect the steam pressure. The MFCR, an electronic instrument that displays meteorological data and sensor outputs from the ship, is used to obtain wind information. The weightboard operator provides an aircraft suite. In order to hurl operators below the deck, the center deck operator compares those figures to the charts in his book, sets the output, and delivers the necessary steam pressure to his headset. Going back to the airplane, the pilot of Rio is also shown a weightboard by the aforementioned operator, who acknowledges the number by giving it a thumbs up. The Behind the launch bar with the shuttle, the pilot controls the aircraft carefully and gently. Aviation boatswain's mates wearing green jerseys are in charge of overseeing this procedure. They notify the director to lower the launch bar when everything is lined up correctly and he gives the signal to the pilot. The holdback fitting is then fastened to the nose gear by a hookup operator in a green shirt who is standing directly beneath the jet. A holdback is a reusable bar used to temporarily constrain an aircraft before a catapult-assisted launch. Similar to the archer's hand holding the arrow just before firing. He checks to see if the holdback is securely fastened and tells the rest of the launch team. The pilot is instructed to move ahead once the yellow shirt gives the rolling signal to the hookup operator, which forces the tow bar to lower in front of the shuttle. Two crew members may occasionally be visible as in this instance. Both mimicking each other is for educational purposes, which indicates that one of them is receiving instruction. A red-shirted ordnance guy will briefly take over control of an aircraft carrying ordnance the yellow shirt gives the pilot the hands up signal. Running underneath the jet, a different ordnance petty officer equips the weapon. When arming is finished, they hand control back to the yellow shirt who then signals for tension to be applied. So next time you fly around with an aircraft, you have the best knowledge on knowing these signals. What hand signals were you familiar with? That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been high technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you.